And we are live. Welcome everyone to this weekly or so be daily update of IT security news and stuff that's broken and not much working and other fun stuff in between. Also should have uh, anyway. So let's start. Maybe um, yeah, so much stuff happened. Why do I need to newscast this is often because just every day just so much stuff is broken it's uh, hilarious here on chrome releases release updates from the chrome team stable channel update for desktops for 78 something 39.04 for windows mac linux which will roll out over the coming days week security fixes and rewards so this includes some CVE 2019, of course, use after free in PDF film. So yeah, opening PDF files in Chrome, <coughs> use after free, 2019. Um, capture top moments, create highlight videos, what the heck. Um, use after free in audio, so yeah, uh, pulls audio right, which by the way, are we running? I sure, I hope checked. Um, anyway, Google is aware of a report that an exploit for this CV, uh, CVE 2019 13 720 is, uh, exists in the wild, so that is 30, um, 1370 20, which is used after free in audio there. Um, dollars to be done. Um, Google is aware of reports that an exploit for use after free in audio, reported by Anton Ivanov and Alexei of Kaspersky Labs, at least something they are not snake oil for. Um, yeah, um, <clears throat> not amazing, probably. In similar CVE of Google's stuff, the default privileges of NFC near field communication, there is a possible local bypass of user interaction requirement on package installation due to a default permission. <coughs> this could also, yeah, sandboxes and, and whatnot and default permissions in NFC package installation. This could lead to local es uh, escalation of privileges by installing an application with no additional execution privileges needed. User interaction is needed for exploitation. Product Android versions, Android 8, 0, 1, something. So yeah, local package installation right over NFC because that's what we, everyone probably was asking for. You want to online pay and yeah, you get some nice package installed with it. In similar Google Nows, I guess you probably recognize Asimia Open Titan, open source, transparent, trustworthy, <coughs> and secure silicon. Yeah, transparent and trustworthy from Google. So security begins with secure infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Recurring theme here to have higher confidence in the security and integrity of the infrastructure. We need to anchor our trust at the foundation in a special purpose chip. Um, yeah, not really sure if we need a special purpose chip for that. And un anchoring the trust in silicon, ensure the server or device boots with the correct firmware and hasn't been infected with low level malware, probably also preventing user installation. But so this is, of course, risk five, right? Well, of course, and of course, risk five, uh, at least as far as risk five I heard somewhere. Yeah, here is um, active engineering project stuffed by. And so on, open source microprocessor, the low risk Libex and risk five based design. And um, comes to the audience, they would never buy from Google botnet. I also wanted to point out that I really wonder if this all the, there you see as quickly as big corporations jump onto this. We, for decades, there is some independent scene of open hardware research and development and then even even at this at just uh, the earliest forms of development big corporations like Google need to get into this and try to snatch up their fair share in this is in my opinion of course they probably fear their customers or their influence potentially losing their grip there so even there you see as soon as something risk five and so on it's yeah immediately they need to jump onto this and try to monetize on this um, in my opinion but as you usually leave me in the comments below what you think i'm more concerned about facebook google and 
microblob would be a billing trouble if they leak our data. Um, yeah, interesting. Also, we have tons of Apple news here. Um, by the way, today I wanted to maybe try to get faster through this. Let's see how this is going. iOS 13. So Daring Firewall, of course, one of those flagship Apple, so they say, blogger. Here, one of the famous ones. iOS 13.2 is over seriously killing apps in the background. And there you have it here live on this channel. Uh, Apple blogger, the, are we the only ones noticing peak bugs and maybe not the most amazing development? But yeah, one of the most famous Apple bloggers already. Major new bugs introduced in 13, so even although, okay, that is quoted anyway, background downloads are often hang forever and never run. So yeah, background downloads, like yeah, not even the downloads are loading anymore. Apps get killed in the background so aggressively that iOS effectively doesn't offer multitasking anymore. Yeah, 2019, you heard it here first. <laughs> iOS 13, not usable micro, uh, micro, yeah, uh, multitasking anymore. Continuing iOS 13 pattern of breaking long held basic functionality. I'm sure Apple has good excuse about why their software quality is so shitty again. I heard the same thing over and over from people inside. They aren't given enough time to fix bugs. Your software quality is broken, Apple, deeply, systematically broken. Get your shit together. So yeah, not only me, also there also. So that is a quote from, so not only me, John Gruber and also Marco Arment here on Twitter. The bug where apps are getting killed soon, their background is driving me nuts. So them there on Daring Fireball. Um, Daring Fireball, yeah. And start a YouTube video in Safari, switch to another app. Also, by the way, who is YouTube video in Safari? But anyway, switch to another app, go back to Safari and the video loads from scratch, starts from the beginning. It, so, and by the way, uh, you heard it here on this channel first, or, or if you're reading this vlog, he of all Apple fanboy fame, if he could downgrade to 13.13, he probably would, even though he'd make lose mean losing AirPod Pro support. Well, also, yeah, iOS, I also wonder, by the way, uh, most likely this is Bluetooth, right? I would wonder, um, losing this is a little bit near, nah, maybe we should actually try this. I'm not really sure getting into I, uh, AirPod Pro, though, for many reasons, but somewhat, I would think so. You could, as far as I know, pair AirPods and AirPod Pros with other Android devices, so Losing this support may be only special Apple Snowflake stuff. I would think basic Bluetooth stuff like pairing it normally should probably work. But yeah, 2019, you hear it here and there and people, even the greatest Apple fanboys would go back and there you see my recurring reminder that we should have user firmware installation, user downgrades, user installation. This is exactly the problem that I personally have, not only with our company software, but in general as a user, for each and every one of you and me to have user installable stuff that we can load our own stuff, even if certificates expire, if Apple services, um, lights go out and all this stuff. Speaking about similar news here live on Twitter, Nikolaus Gephardt, 20 years and six major Windows versions later, a game he once wrote still works perfectly. Two apps he wrote last year are now as buggy piece of useless crap after the macOS update. Amazing engineering by Microsoft. Don't make you think twice which platform to support as a developer. Recurring summary here of I'm not making this up. It's not just me. You see it. Also, we will have even more news because it was Apple bashing news. But um, calling this amazing engineering Microsoft, yeah, I mean, at least I wouldn't agree to that because personally worked with some APIs and some of the APIs are really vintage 80s garish quality of 16-bit values of mouse cursor in a higher and lower part of a register and yeah, whatever, because Windows, I don't know, 3 or 2 or even 1. But at least, at least you give them that they usually, well, at least what we recently shout out here, but not as much as Apple, not break stuff as much. And as much critic I would give also to Microsoft Windows direction, at least you really need to give them that they can get their compatibility stuff together for the most part. Maybe also something that desktop Linux could potentially maybe learn from. But yeah, not only me, you hear it there also on Twitter and so on. Speaking about Apple analytics, 
can't make this up. That was a DOCSIS cable reconnect, not making this up. Here's a lock. Um, that is hilarious. Why is it still allowed to disconnect business users in in 2019? This is so sad. I hope you are still uh, reconnecting here. Um, how much did you miss? I saw you some hundreds drop frames. That is so sad. Um, yeah, not making this up. This just here. This so first, of course, I saw a stupid buggy TG3, but no. Then turned around, blinking router light. It's hilarious. Yeah, link is down. Link is up. Um, that is. Um, you were gone for minutes. Yeah, the other question is more: Have have you seen the beginning of the app start? Uh, app store stuff. This is hilarious. Um, yeah, if you have. Uh, um, the last days were quite quite good with drop frames and stuff, and uh, even the Mac Mini is happy today. And then you have, anyway, um, probably I start from the App Store data analysis company here. So uh, not sure if that is missing. Anyway, so not only peak bugs in Mac OS and stuff, but even in the App Store, um, according to some external third party data analysis company, Apple is losing 20 million app. Reviews, so, so not only apps like our exact code, exact scan stuff, not only apps and companies are leaving the App Store. No, even app reviews are leaving the App Store under Apple supervision. Um, ex here, external analyze, they track here stuff. So um, not everything is lost, but like many reviews, um, including stars and um, so yeah, a lot of reviews lost. So, but yeah, this is just a summary of can Apple operate uh, the cloud and stuff, and even yeah, but also yeah, big big names on the list. 65 million ratings allegedly. Um, the, that app figures tracked. Um, then it was yeah, 20 lost. That's uh, slightly slightly chaotically written, but whatever. So 50 percent of the, for the most apps, 50 percent of the re reviews were lost. Um, uh, at some at some reviews, even up to 95 percent, but yeah, whatever you, you get the idea. All all vendors, probably like American Express, hotels, Amazon, um, not only US but all markets. But yeah, probably according to Apple, it was an error. Like yeah, okay, fine. Anyway, so yeah, um, if you would need more proof, not only me, not only my impression. Um, even someone on Twitter agreed with me that he couldn't install um, Catalina on the first try. So it's not only me who was too stupid, which probably my previous videos there, me too stupid to uh, install the Catalina better, better when we wanted. Um, that destroyed my Mojave partition because peak bugs. Um, the disk utility, by the way, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I had a couple of tweets. It's hilarious, the disk utility for partitioning stuff. Anyway, totally useless stuff there in macOS since a couple of versions. And someone else agreed with me, so it was not my incompetence, which later Apple anyway said. Apple said with some macOS update that they fixed installation on low disk, low free disk space. So most likely my installation was broken because not enough disk space, I guess, because it didn't have too much left space there. Anyway, speaking about operating systems, Huawei, another German news, but anyway, I translate anyway. So Huawei. Um, supports app at alternative app store with up to one billion dollar and one thing is really curious so we had in previous operating system news this um, what was it harmony os and so this is apparently as far as i read out of this here you would think hey they market their amazing microkernel uh, Har harmony os which some new sites already call vaporware your previous video here on the channel but so this is this is just for their alternative Android app store, right? So this is Huawei's app gallery as counterpart to Google's Play Store. So maybe I was giving Huawei too much credit for doing this harmony wise. Maybe some other major news outsides who were fast to call this Vapor were, were right. But um, yeah, according to this, this harmony is probably still far away because you would think they would eventually start with this. So yeah, supporting Android, I didn't even read um, Huawei Mobile Services, 1.7 billion um, that Entwickler can get to support this here, but um, yeah, not really sure how you can get this. You can read the 
um, read the fine print how you can get this. Anyway, in more amazing news at Microsoft, Microsoft thinks we should have a three-day weekend, which to some degree uh, I might even agree, but maybe we can discuss this here in a, another video sometime soon. Microsoft force focuses as a company on productivity, but recent experiments by Microsoft Japan suggest with a four-day work week we may be more productive if we work less. This might sound like, a pro sound like a paradox, but I have a little bit of a problem. Always when I deal with big standard organizations or companies, it's always here's some meeting, there's some meeting, everything. It's always like this web tool and that web tool. And at the end, you manage nothing, at least not much, especially with the week weekly telephone calls where it's just yeah, this business as usual, nothing much happened, yada, yada. And similar, it's here they found people... Um, they have here somewhere meeting. So more importantly, from the bottom line standpoint, however, productivity went up. So productivity, so much to all the bullshit of always working long, working this, productivity went up 39.9% as fewer and shorter meetings were held. Yeah, something I totally can underline here. Often virtually rather than in person, which we personally also fly very seldomly, also Friday for Future, right? Um, don't really quite get why big corporations, well, except having a party, but otherwise, um, don't see the point of flying over the ocean just to have some in-person meeting for a day. In the end, the project had 92.1% employees approval, suggesting workers were happy with getting more done in less time. And the trial involved 2,300 people. Um, so maybe something I would probably maybe discuss more uh, on this and the other channel. In more insecure news, not operating system related, light commands also in, in 2019, no insecurity stuff is real without a dedicated website, which probably, fun fact, I should actually share, check what I'm even showing. And yeah, light commands, the latest vulnerability laser-based audio injection, which I find really crazy in parts of laser-based audio injection in voice controllable systems. The light commands is a vulnerability of MEMS microphone that allows attackers to remotely inject inaudible and invisible commands into voice assistants such as Google Assistant, Amazon, Alexa, Facebook portal and Apple Siri using light. Total crazy stuff in my opinion, even here from 75 meter away. But if you are new to this, maybe you do not know that you can also um, listen to audio on vibrations of a window I already heard 20 years ago. Um, so just the vibration of the window is enough to listen in with a laser, at least as far as I've not tried this, but people told me so probably it is. Implication of injecting unauthorized voice commands vary in severity based on the type of commands that can be executed through voice. As an example in our paper, they showed that an attacker can use light injected voice commands to unlock the victim's smartphone, protected home doors, and yeah, if you were thinking that this is never was the greatest fan of that, but yeah. Unlock. Also, it doesn't help that most voice assistants are generic and they recognize everyone's voice, so they are not like locked biometrically to just this voice. I think only some latest voice assistant maybe can differentiate too. Certainly a total security vulnerability, which also probably, yeah, I mean, voice, is, voice assistants, in my opinion, not the most helpful, but if you're using this, certainly not cool if everyone can pick it up and tell it something, well, at least call someone and, and call it, but whatever. Um, yeah, probably you want to study this more if you do this kind of fun stuff. Speaking about not security, not VPN, we had in last week or so, user's password exposed in mass credential stuffing attack. Many of the dumps have been pulled off public web pages, but at least one remains. They say here, allegedly, as many as 2,000 users of NordVPN, the security snake oil that you probably don't need and we never shield it out here on this channel. In my opinion always called this and other antivirus snake oil. The virus private, a virtual a virus, a virtual private network service that recently disclosed a surf hack that leaked crypto keys has fallen victim of credential stuffing attacks that allow unauthorized access, access to their accounts. In recent weeks, credentials for NordVPN users have circulated on Pastebin and other online forums. They contain the email addresses, plain text passwords, and expiration dates associated with the NordVPN user accounts. Speaking about malware designed for QNAP NAS devices, obviously often running Linux, I guess, if you were wondering that just using Linux with some glued on top hobby NAS stuff that gives you a secure experience. In this article, malware 
dissected by the NCS CFI specialist is is what visited upon. The malware is designed specifically for QNIP NAS devices and is capable of various malicious activities in an infected device. The malware can be removed from the device and there is a firmware update from the manufacturer for further, further protection. They received so about the malware um, when it's investigated the related but yeah it's a server maybe also not the greatest idea to connect your local internet of thing devices to the outer internet. Um, what could possibly go wrong, especially with as many security vulnerabilities we have from all over the place. Um, recurring theme here. In similar news, some uh, closing this out here, some German article, not really security related, but just showing you how the mainstream press slowly but steadily realizes that stuff is not the most amazing and also the huge difference in Apple fanboys and vloggers and bloggers and stuff calling Apple services amazing and you need to buy this because it's amazing and other more analyzing mainstream press that are a little bit new more newsworthy that they write here Apple customers need to don't have much uh, much comfort in using str uh, streaming there with this new Apple TV plus stuff um, certainly I would not be personally too much in this Apple pre-produced content, which of course like content especially tailored to keep people in this reality distortion field and just get this kind of Hollywood stories that probably match the Apple experience and of course not the topic but always the underlying bottom line of what they probably have there as a story or certainly not making fun out of this or criticizes or something of that sort. And certainly I find this really crazy that tech companies need their TV show produced stuff. It's hilarious and you should even pay for their marketing shows. But anyway, they say here this is totally backward um, like streaming five or ten years ago. Uh, they don't have much comfort that the competition has uh, is long usual um, like Netflix and Prime Video of Amazon and SkyTicket and whatnot. The Apple service does not have many functions that the competition has for many years um, and, and so on and, and so forth. So yeah, also just is it just us that hallucinate their stuff, not, not amazing, but um, also there. Uh, in similar news there at Apple, the, uh, thank you very much, did want to close this, at which Apple announces 2.5 billion plan to ease Californian housing crisis and what is crazy in this story is that when you look into um, into Apple, this is of course this American business stuff. First, they don't pay much taxes in, in the EU. They even get sued for this. They lose. They should pay back taxes in, in millions of back taxes, which Ireland doesn't even want. So Ireland says we don't even want this. Um, we want to keep Apple's business, which is hilarious. As, as nearly no taxes they pay, they have what 1.8 or 0.8 or whatever that was. But here's other people like OS News. So I said that um, called out here Apple to donate five percent of it. So apparently they got a 50 billion tax cut, which probably we should fact check. So just to put this a little bit in perspective, our usual. Um, End of the news segment, so Apple tax break. Can we find this here? Um, Apple's tax break yields 102 billion boon for um, shareholders. Um, says, uh, yeah, in Apple says 14 billion EU tax order defies royalty and common. Yeah, I mean, not paying taxes and then saying now they should pay the taxes and that defies reality. I mean, Anyway, um, yeah, 14.4 billion, so not really a little bit. Um, took the GOP tax cut and makes it a 100 billion stock, so how many? Anyway, you see the idea, so uh, hundreds of billions and whatsoever, and then if the development in countries is not the most um, amazing for the citizens living there, then they donate or, well, it's not even donate, right? It's not like, it's probably with some strings attached, it's like some funds. So 
Sunding commitment will take roughly two years to be fully utilized and the capital return to Apple will be reinvested in future projects over the next five years. Furthermore, the company says it will keep looking for ways to support local communities and affordable. Yeah, maybe pay the taxes all over so local communities have schools and streets and working electricity. And um, so it says invested so additionally will commit 300 million towards building affordable houses here. Yeah, I mean, all the, all the money that the government didn't get, like, I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's like nothing, right? It's, it's, it's such a tiny fraction of tax cuts, in my opinion, just that you heard you some additional sources. And last but not least, the last McDonald's in Iceland, apparently when, didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently in 2009, McDonald's closed in Iceland. And on October the 31st last year, brought the, what, that year brought the last McDonald's hamburger in this country and it's uh, still in pristine condition, slightly frightening, wondering how many chemical preservation stuff is in there. So that's just the, if you were wondering if that is a thing. Anyway, I hope you learned something, anything between text cuts, vulnerabilities in Linux-based devices, laser-based light commands and all the other broken and not multitasking Google open source risk 5 and other Chrome based vulnerabilities. Um, theoretically, I wanted to maybe we could theoretically discuss five uh, shortly some future operating systems on the main channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you appreciate the summary of the most crazy stuff. And you certainly see a recurring theme of all stuff insecure. And I slightly wonder what we still even can use today. Hope to see you soon for the next fun stuff to come.